Hi, it's Lynn from Lynn C Designs. Thank you for joining me today. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in West Sussex in the UK. And I'm going to recreate one of the cards that we made at my card class the other week. Uh, this uses the lovely Garden Bird Houses stamp set. And um, the images are really sweet, so I thought I would make a card. I'm going to switch it up slightly. Base is half a sheet of A4 scored at ten and a half centimeters i've got a matte layer of designer series paper from the in good taste designer series paper pack and i have used the same the label is from the scalloped contours dies which also featured in my card last week which i will link to above this one was kept very plain but what I've done for this version is I've used this die from Basic Borders to create a template and I'm going to use that to just do very softly a little bit of a clouds in the background. So let me bring in a little scrap piece of paper to save my sheet. I've got some balmy blue. Now this is for... Um, I'm going to enter this into this week's colour challenge over at the Global Design Project and their colours are Pale Papaya, one of the new in colours, Balmy Blue and Pear Pizzazz. So I've got those three colours that I'm going to use on my card today and I'm just going to come in with a blending brush, pick up some ink and then very softly going over that edge and I just want a little bit of colour it's going to be very subtle and the great thing about this is you can do it from either side so just so that the clouds aren't too uniform and you can see I've used this template before it's quite a nice way of just creating a little bit of colour on the background of something and you can go as light or as dark as you want. I'm not going to come down the whole page but I'm just going to, the whole label rather. And it doesn't matter if they cross over. Um, To me anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to come one third step down. Off. And I'm just going to give that just a little bit of colour. I don't want any more. Just take some off the some of the starkness away from the white. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to let's pop that out of the way. I'm going to bring in some memento ink and I'm going to stamp my birdhouse. Now, sadly, you can see that this is discoloured and that means that somebody at my class used a stamping blend and I got a feeling it would have been the soft suede stamping blend on photopolymer. It's You shouldn't do it because it just stains them and you can't get that colour out. It doesn't um, impact at all the way they stamp um it's still going to be able to stamp it so let's do that there and if i don't line this up properly then i can always redo it no i'm happy with that not quite on center but it doesn't matter um, and now, before I cut, I can colour that in, so it doesn't matter what's behind it, I'm going to put some greenery in. Now, when I did my sample for class, I used 
my stamp and write markers and applied the colour. And one of the ladies that came to class actually gave me a I'll leave that there, gave me a brilliant idea, and that was stamp the whole thing in green. So I've got pear pizzazz here right in front of me. Pop it that way. And then you can then take the marker and just draw over the branch and brown and that is so much easier and as I think I said before I don't get a great result when I'm using the stamping right markers I'm sure if I persevered um, it would work but it doesn't give me an, a clean enough stamp I know it's a, supposed to be a bit watery watercolory but that is a really nice way and a quick way of getting the two colors now I can still come in with my green And use that to colour in those leaves but for me and you still get a tonal effect because the ink is a little bit darker than these pens the stamp pad rather is a little bit darker um, although it does dry lighter so I thought if I do this one now you can see it and then we'll look at and see what it looks like towards the end but I think that's a really nice and quick way of getting two tone so I'm gonna actually I want to come in and have a little bit there so you can see me do that again Gonna use the thicker end. I just think that's genius. So thank you, Christine, for suggesting that. Very happy with that suggestion. And I was gonna have pale papaya for my base. But I decided not to. I decided to have basic white. So I'm going to bring in pale papaya on the bottom here. We're going to have some flowers. So there's that. Um, so. Now again, I could use my um, markers. But I find with this stamp set, it's quite easy to actually get the, the little flowers and then to add the green. And I am going to do the same. I'm going to use my Pell Papaya pen and just fill in those little dots and if I've missed a little bit I'll just come in with my markers there look fabulous so let's stamp that off the difference yep I 
Let's turn it in. And we've got a couple more. And that's the thing I like about these photopolymer stamps. You can actually see where the ink's going. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know why it doesn't want to go on for me. <sighs> mm, that's a little bit better, I guess. And then we shall just come in with the cross piece and fill that bit in. Lovely. Very happy with that. And so I'm going to use my lens to quickly colour in this tree. Now this is the light soft suede Various bits in the dark. And then this is the dark crumb cake. Of a difference there. I'll do that bit in the crumb cake and then I'm going to use balmy blue and make that tree. And I'm not going to do any shading, I'm just going to keep that quite plain. Lovely, and then we need a little birdie, don't we? So we need a little birdie. Oh, actually, I've got the wrong one out. Because... There we go. I want to have the bird. Where's the memento? Let's bring the memento back. I want the bird. Let's have a look. And he is going to be sitting there waiting. He's waiting to get in. And I'm going to actually paint him with a blue tummy. And then that just leaves a sentiment to go on so I need oh I need a little label so what did I do have I got the last week I cut out a whole bunch of white messages dies I am sure oh. 
Neither of those would do. It's fluke. Not quite big enough. That one is big enough. Maybe you might be coming to visit. Birthday wishes. There we go. So I'll stick those back in my little pot. And then it's just a case of sticking the card together. So what did I do with my base? There we go. I think that is rather lovely. Buffy's come in or open the door anyway. He wants me to play with him. No rest for the wicked, eh? That piece of DSP has been cut slightly smaller than that just to leave a little bit of a border around so that measures 10.2 centimeters by 14 and a half centimeters and I'm going to pop that up with dimensionals Yes, I kept my projects quite simple last month. So this is just a slightly stepped up version. Let's see if I can get that on straight-ish. That will do. And I think I might pop that up as well. Only thing there I'm not very happy with is the bird. And as it's a birthday card, I think we will put a bit of bling on. So I'm going to use some of the elegant faceted gems just to put a little bit of sparkle on. So we'll do uh, there. Ah. Fabulous. There's my original. So... Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you click on the links in the description box, you'll go to my blog and you can go through to my online store where you can purchase any of the items that I've used. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. Bye for now.